Okay, I've got all the uh, parts splayed out on my dryer here because my regular workbench is cluttered like usual. So um, these are all the main components that I'm going to use to uh, use the uh, Arduino Nano Clone here in the uh, four banger project for the zombie groundbreaker. So I'll just do a little round trip of what we've got here. This is the uh, Arduino Nano Clone straight out of the bag with a couple of the strips that it comes with. This is a uh, a TDA 2030 mono audio module and um, you know I, they say they put out like 18 watts so that's going to be plenty for the audio for this project this is the um, the typical four relay module that you find on eBay for like three or four bucks this is uh, just a audio jack or not an audio jack sorry a DC power jack uh, that's got the positive center pole marked for us so these are handy I like to use those for power input um, here's the Cadillac MP3 audio module um, and I got a, a chip in there ready to go but uh, more on that later so that's the audio module here's uh, just a regular one dollar PIR sensor and a Hammond box for putting everything in Just uh, I'm gonna make this one relatively watertight so everything's gonna be inside of there not much hanging out um, these are the little uh, DuPont connectors that are really handy for plugging into the Arduino there so I'll use a couple of these and I'm gonna use two of the uh, 12 volt generic Chinese solenoids in this project too so that's the overview of the parts so I'll start with soldering the headers on the Nano and go from there Okay, starting with the Nano, what um, what we're going to wind up doing, what I usually do anyway, is um, the strips that normally come in the bag, we're not going to use the entire thing. So what I did for the first one is uh, I broke off 12 pins, and those are going to go from the bottom right here, starting at the VN pin. That goes from uh, the VN pin over here all the way over to A0. And I'll just go ahead and solder in this entire row. But other than that, um, the only other two that we're going to need are going to be these two right here. And let me just, I'll bust the off and show you. So I break off two more of these pins, just like that. And then this is where those are going to go right there oh god this focus on this is horrible okay this is the uh, snubber diode or the uh, flyback diode or the freewheeling diode whatever diode you want to call it but basically all it is um, what I have here is a um, uh, it's, it's a cheap Chinese 12 volt solenoid see the uh, little 12 volt thing there but um, the deal is with these is that the um, the leads coming out they're they're not polarized you can hook it up to 12 volts either way and uh, you know that that's great and everything but um, these particular types of solenoids are really electrically noisy when you turn them on and off if you hook one of the leads up to a relay and you turn it on and off um, it just creates all kinds of noise so what you gotta do is you gotta put a diode across the leads and that will dampen the electrical noise so I, I call it a flyback diode people call it all different types of things but um, basically here's here's what it looks like it's a uh, let's see a 2N4007 diode and um, you can see I've got the um, the red lead hooked up to the cathode of the diode. I don't know if you can see that very well Not with the light. Yeah, there you go. See the cathode there? You want that on the red side because we're going to actually be switching the black side of this with our relay. But um, yeah, for this one, that's what I'm going to do. So they say to put these about as close to the uh, solenoid as you can. So I am just going to cut these off. I'm going to give myself a little bit of slack there, but I'm going to go ahead and just do this. And 
So now we got those cut off. And then another neat thing about these is um, you can unscrew the, uh, the little solenoid part off so you don't have to drag the physical valve all over the place while you're working on soldering these things. So that makes it a little bit easier to, you know, just to wire it up and while you're putting your prop together. And then once you mount your physical solenoid where it's going to go, then you just, you know, bring this over, slide it on, put the nut on, and everything's good. So, so I'm going to solder this up and slide a piece of heat shrink on it. Okay, one thing that uh, I wanted to mention before I go and hook up all my spaghetti and all my modules and things like that is um, you want to send the f uh, firmware update to your Arduino and that's a, it's a rather important safety issue too because um, what's going on is you know if you take an Arduino out of the box that you bought from China usually they've got the LED blink program running on them but you know any Arduino that you run you don't know what the pin settings were on the firmware until you upload your own so um, I, I just think it's a good best practice to upload the firmware you know before you ever hook up any wires to an Arduino just so that you know that it's running what you think it's running so so I just hooked mine up there and um, I'm gonna go over to the software here you probably won't be able to see this too well but I'm gonna say tools upload firmware to Arduino and I've got the four banger standalone uh, selected it's 1.2 is the version I'm on so I'm just gonna click upload that uh, gives you a little message you can just say okay to that but um, so you can see it's sending something over there and it's done over here and it even says thank you at the end there so so that's all you gotta do to upload this program to your nano so I won't go into too much more detail about that but um, as it sits right now you know this will have four banger code running on it so well I got some spaghetti hooked up here um, you can hear the monks chanting right now that's my ambient audio that I've got going for this test I was gonna do a quick uh, show of I've got a uh, it's an outdoor uh, landscape light and right here is a, uh, a 12 volt LED it's a one watt LED it's pretty bright but um, you know you can see it shining uh, some nice ambient light that's what I'm gonna have actually shining on the prop uh, in its ambient state and then I've got one channel dedicated to turning on the uh, the 12 volt landscape light here so when a scare gets kicked off it'll light up this floodlight and actually throw some extra light onto the prop when it starts doing its thing and I've also got the PIR mounted to the back side of this thing so This will just get staked in the ground, and then uh, when the PIR kicks off, I'll kick it off here real quick. But yeah, you can see it uh, light up, and then uh, there it goes back to ambient. Just got a short little test sequence in there. Okay, I've got uh, everything wired up now. It looks it looks like a plate of spaghetti right here, but it's really not too bad. I've got um, Oh geez, where should I start? I guess, yeah, power coming in. You know, it's just going to have one DC power source. And then that DC uh, positive 12 volts right here, it got fanned out to multiple things. I actually ended up running um, the cable that goes over to this module right here, which is um, it's a landscape light that's going to have, uh, it's got four wires going to it inside of this cable um, it's got 12 volts continuously on it's got a ground that's always grounded then it's got a relay switched ground which is gonna 
turn this thing on when that circuit closes this uh, floodlight turns on and then it's got a a wire from the PIR sensor on the back side of this thing right here when that thing uh, detects um, it sends the PIR signal over to the Arduino pins uh, I've got it hooked up to the uh, A6 pin here and then I've got um, just the regular manual trigger you know that's uh, this green and blue wire I've got that going out to a little uh, two pin terminal just in case um, you know I want to hook up like a remote relay or something like that and then um, let's see I guess it should be noted that I ended up using the 12 volts to run my PIR that's in here um, these things work fine up to like 20 volts apparently so I just used the 12 volts that I was already running to this thing just to power my PIR sensor so that works good um, I'll probably just I'll put up a uh, a little diagram that kind of shows uh, what What pins I used you know it's it's going to be in the uh, documentation too but you know this is what it looks like how I did it before I glue this thing you know I'm going to glue the Arduino right about here and I'll keep the uh, the USB end I'll keep it pointing that way in case I want to pop the cover off and reprogram it for some reason but once this thing actually gets put all together you know that's what it's going to be it's going to be part of that prop and I'm just going to leave it like that leave it closed and as long as it continues to work that's what it's going to be so I'm not going to be worried about reprogramming this thing um, I'll show you one other interesting thing that I did for audio um, I'm actually using a TDA 2030 I think it's called little module here and it's a little mono amplifier so what I did off of the uh, mp3 module here I ended up just soldering a single wire off of this pin here uh, or this pad and then I ran that to the uh, input pin on this mono amplifier and this thing they're supposed to be like 18 watts and um, it takes 12 volts so that's you know twisted up right into my main power in here and then a ground you know that just goes into the main ground and um, I've got the speaker wires coming straight out and they use speaker wire so it'll be obvious what that wire is and I'm just gonna glue it to the bottom of the uh, lid here of the uh, box but you know it sounds good enough for what this props gonna be and um, you know just putting the one wire on there makes it so you don't have to use like a plug and then cut the plug and all that stuff so so that's what I'm gonna do um, it's kinda tough to see um, I've got the ground going into the common here and then that's just getting daisy changed over to uh, the center post which is kinda like the common pole for each one of these channels I took a sharpie and labeled my channels just so it was obvious but um, that's pretty much the insides of this thing and so I'm gonna uh, button it up and uh, install it so that should be the next step all right I've got the uh, laptop out here in the garage hooked up to the uh, four banger and my Casa Fear groundbreaker I'll uh, walk around and show you the front of him he's uh, he's just the typical one you know it's got the uh, cylinders in each one of the uh, elbow joints here he's got a suit from the Goodwill and he's got a uh, I think it's an apple juice bottle for a head that uh, is on a pivot so it kind of bobbles around when he starts flailing and I've got uh, let's see I've got him hooked up to the USB on the software because I've been actually tweaking out the sequence a little bit just to to get it just right and um, you can see over here um, probably not too well but this button right here that I'm hovering over um, if you've got that clicked and turned green when you play your sequence it'll actually send it out to the controller in real time so I've been doing that to adjust my sequence to get it the way that I want it so I'll go ahead and uh, show you a sample here I'll uh, I'll go ahead and kick it off from the PC here
So now, after the uh, sequence completes, I'm going to go ahead, since I like it and I think that looks good, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to upload that. So now that that's uploaded, um, yeah, I can button this up and uh, it should be good to go. Okay, so we're out in the garage. It's about 2.30 or so in the morning. And we're going to do a final test of our little groundbreaker build here. So we can see our... Uh, Ambient LED is lighting them up here real nice, and I'm going to wave my hand in front of the PIR sensor. So that looks like a successful test to me.